right, hello everyone, and welcome to the long incoming second session of Dark Royal. Dark Royal, for those unfamiliar, is a tabletop role playing game using the Star Trek Adventures rule set by Modifius Entertainment. Uh, it is set apart from the other Star Trek Adventures games that I've run uh, by the fact that it is focusing on an entire alien, entirely alien crew. Uh, the aliens, known as the Cornet, have made a few cameos in McCall's Nighthawk and Cerberus games, which are also found on my YouTube channel. We're running in the same universe and time as those two games, and yes, before you ask, the name Cornet is a deliberate nod to Warhammer 40k. Uh, as I said, if you want to play catch up, the VODs for all of that is available on my YouTube. All you really need to know, though, is that the Dark Royal is not a Starfleet ship and thus plays by different rules. Uh, otherwise, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right into things. Uh, it's been a while, so we're just going to start off with a captain's log. Uh, Captain Dominus, if you would take things away. Captain's official report. The Imperial date is 0014406.M03. Been roughly over a month since our encounter with the Nighthawk, and a little uh, less time than the debriefing at Cerberus Station. Been an interesting month so far. We're currently scanning the sector that has been designated Epsilon 5. I normally don't add any inflection to my reports, but this is boring. We have found nothing but Class D planetoids, and an interesting, mildly so, for at least our Federation officer, a Neutron Star. The crew is getting a little bit restless, been hearing some murmurs, and they're itching for something more engaging. I do hope something interesting does happen soon, or I might start instituting some old-time Carnet rules. Believe... A fight club would be in order. I will not participate as it will be an unfair advantage for the rest of the crew, unless challenged directly. End log. Alrighty. And as requested, uh, we actually are going to have a scene between Kaya and Dominus uh, in the ready room. So, Captain, you of course are doing whatever it is you're doing in the ready room, and there is a chime at your door. Enter. And Kaya will walk in, kind of taking a little bit of a swagger uh, as she enters. She kind of leans against uh, the closest uh, doorpost. He's just reading on a pad, and he just looks up for a brief moment and goes back to reading. What can I do for you, head maintenance officer? I'm kind of curious. It's been kind of quite a while. You know, the ship is uh, performing admirably. We have every... Uh, all the maintenance logs are up to date. Everything's been replaced. Things that haven't even started to degrade are getting replaced. Uh, I figured now they could uh, do without me for a little bit. I'm um, I'm curious. Are we going to talk about it at any point? And she continues to kind of lean with uh, arms folded. Talk about what? If you're going to beat around the bush, just come on and say it. You're a shapeshifter. Yes, and what of it? Are you going to tell the rest of us? Well, you seem to know. Does yeah, everyone need to know? I think it's kind of important. We, th we thought you were a coronet captain. And you're heralding a coronet vessel. But you aren't. In the eyes of the military and in the government, I am coronet. They know my status. I've been raised, and I value the Cornet and Imperium's value. What makes me different is because I can turn into a plant or to another person. Well, if you can change your shape, that kind of devoids of being a spy, a saboteur. Someone who can change their form can easily change their allegiances. <laughs> I'm actually surprised by this. The majority of people that know my true self, I guess, if you want to put it like that, have had no issues with me being a changeling, a shapeshifter. But it is to be expected. Do you feel that this information will alleviate any concern among the crew? I'd say 
upfront policy is always the best policy. You let them choose what they want. If they don't like it, they can leave. I don't care. I just want to talk about it. Hmm. Well, you're here. What do you want to know? So is it superficial? Is it full metamorphosis? What is it? Uh, at that moment, he'll stand up and his form will completely pull into himself. And he is a humanoid shape, tar like substance. It's pure black, except for a gold strand that seems to mix around within his uh, shifting form. And then he slowly reverts back. Oh, full. All right. Well, that's. Uh, she kind of pulls herself off the post and goes back to attention, arms folded behind her back. Well, I appreciate showing me that. I was curious. It was uh, eating a hole in my head, so to speak. Well, apparently, that had a lot of head to go through if it took a month for you to come up and talk to me. I was. I thought you would come talk to me. You kind of played it off like I didn't nobody saw it. Well, I figured you had enough time. That's this all. Is a, this is a cornet ship. If you have a question, come and ask. We don't beat around the bush. We don't wait and sit on our hands. You know this. It's our way. That's fair. When you talk like that, I can almost believe it. <laughs> and she kind of gives us a little smirk, steps forward. Here's the maintenance logs for the uh, engineering, engineering system. Uh, next time we get a, a refuel, refuel resupply, we'll need these. Some of these parts I could probably reuse and just... Uh, <clears throat> Just letting you know, that's all. Dominus. Yes. I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering, please. Difficulty of one. Where is my character? Yep. And insight this check, engineering? Insight engineering. This check is to see if you notice anything in particular in this maintenance log. Okay, if I do not have a focus. One success, that's all you need. You note that uh, your chief engineer is performing admirably. In fact, uh, she has projected uh, all of the needed maintenance for the next seven cycles. So she's really on top of things. The good news, I was going to say, the good news is there are no Jensen's in this report. There there are zero Jensen's. Yeah, would be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think we get a fool? Well, the nearest outpost we can get to for any resupply has been server station. So transmit this information and let them know if they need to replicate anything difficult. They may not have all of our schematics. Of course, only share with them information as needed. Anything harder to obtain will submit for a resupply vessel. Understood, sir. I was just waiting for your authorization before I submitted it. Good work. Keep it up. Yes, sir. And she'll kind of clip her heels, bowed face, and start to head out. All righty. Our next scene is actually going to be in the science bay with our lovely Bolian officer. So, uh, Lieutenant Koros, or is it Lieutenant Commander? I never remember. I believe it's Lieutenant. Okay, yeah, I just checked. You are Lieutenant. Awesome. So, Koros, as the uh, captain has been alluding to in his log... Um, for the Cornet crew, it's been very boring, but for you as the science officer, it's been actually rather uh, jam-packed. You've had a lot of scan data to go over, a lot of uh, interesting sort of uh, readings from the sensors when it comes to the neutron star, things of that nature. And to start things off with you, I'd like you to roll me a, let's call this an insight science, and the difficulty here is going to be a zero. Okay, so I, uh, refresher. I click insight. Yep, you and click insight, and it'll next. pop up a window, Remember and then you just step through the process, and you're rolling two d twenty. Applicable focus. I would say you would have one in this instance. Yes. Look at that three momentum. Very nice. So uh, you notice. Oh, and by the way, if I'm saying your name wrong, please feel free to correct me. But it's been a while. Um, so what you notice are three very important items. The first 
is that the last D class planetoid you actually scanned, there's dilithium on that there moon, which means it is a an asset, to put it bluntly, uh, both to the Federation and to the Cornet, because uh, everybody uses dilithium, mostly. Um, item two is that the neutron star is actually wobbling on its axis. Now, you wouldn't think that's worthy of note, but you would guess that within the next 100 to 200 years, it's very possible that the neutron star will sort of eat itself and turn into a black hole. Item three, however, is probably the most important. You're noticing that there is a subspace variation that seems to be following the ship. And this variation would be something similar to, say, a cloaked vessel, but you're not able to determine what it is exactly. And that's what you learn from this check. Okay. Am I allowed to do any, like, brief scans or checks on it at this moment? You are indeed, uh, but before you do, I believe as science officer, you do get a free question. And what does that mean? <laughs> it literally means you can ask me uh, any question about what I've just told you, and I will answer truthfully and honestly. And of course, if you're stuck, you can solicit help from the rest of your crew. Yes, I am stuck on this one. Um, well, I, I guess because the star is in uh, on its way out, is there any way that I, we could potentially use that to figure out more information on this vessel? Ooh, I see. So using sort of the 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 way the star is moving to uh, see if you can gather more information about the subspace variation. Sure. Um, I would say, because it is your free question, that you are able to tell that the vessel, and you are able to confirm it as a vessel, the vessel that is shadowing you is approximately the size of the Nighthawk, but it is not the Nighthawk. Got it. And uh, not so that uh, so that Soup has a chance to get in here. It is at this point that there is a chime at the door to the science lab. Come on in. Uh, oh, crap. What? Is he master at arms, Kragget? Yes. How may I help you? I was wondering if there was anything odd on the sensors. I was just calibrating our armaments and I thought I should drop down here. Perfect, because from what I've gathered, we have come. I was not alerted that we would have ones on our ship that I was not notified of. <laughs> I suppose I should say we have unexpected, not someone we can see. They, they're they not on our ship. They're out there in space. Are you saying that we have people trailing us? Yes. I do not know if they're friendly or not, though. If they have not made themselves apparent to us, then most likely they are not friendly. True, but... True, but you never know. Um, I'm assuming we should probably go tell the captain or check out, try to see what we can get first. Probably, Captain. Probably. Apologies, uh, mic problems on my end. But, uh, hmm. Yes, we shall. We shall endeavor to make sure that the Captain understands that we are currently being followed. Is there anything you can tell us of the ship that is following us? Um, 
out of character uh elh yes can i go ahead and run a scan now on the vessel following up uh you can indeed and this is going to be a reason and science and if someone could get the ship the ship is going to be doing a sensors and science uh the difficulty here is going to be a two because the ship is currently cloaked uh but however i am going to be a little bit of a a uh Evil GM, and I'm going to spend some threat to make it a difficulty three. So you oh, may wish sure. to spend some momentum. Okay, I'll get the ship, if that's okay. Yep. Permission it's granted. 2d20, right? Uh, 2d20, unless you want to buy additional dice with momentum, um, which you may wish to do because your ship is not assisting you in this matter. Got it. Um, is it okay if we go ahead and use at least one? Sounds good. Okay, I'll take that off. So that'd be 3d20 now, right? You got it. Focus, yes. <laughs> yep. Three successes is all you need. So, uh, what appears uh, on your little hollow table thing that you have going on here is a ship that looks like this, and I'll describe it momentarily. So what you're seeing is sort of a, a, a delta-shaped uh, ship. Uh, it is very flat and is maybe only about uh, five or six decks tall. So it's even uh, thinner than a Defiant class. Um, it has these sort of short, stubby little wings that come off of the conical-shaped midsection. And towards the rear of the, uh, that midsection are a cornucopia of various engines and impulse engines and things like that. Um, you're not seeing any noticeable nacelles, but somehow they're keeping up with you at warp. Um, the other thing that you would notice is that they do appear to have what are a number of disruptor banks uh, along their uh, dorsal side. Uh, other than that, that's all you get with that check. However, you do get a free question, because again, you are the science officer. Did you say anything about weapons in what uh, Yes, they there there are uh, what appear to be disruptor banks on the dorsal section of the ship. Could you please explain to me what those are? Is it uh, sensor related or? Sure. So uh, the disruptor banks uh, for the uninitiated, um, they are basically the quote unquote non phaser uh weapon technology um they generally have some form of energy dampening or some form of piercing effect uh when fired against shields or uh, other things like it um as far as it is related to this ship in particular you're guessing that they have a energy dampening effect which means that every time they hit you you're going to lose some power Um, trying to figure out what to add. Well, you do have Kragrith right there. He could provide uh, an insight. Kragrith, he... what do you think about this? Fight? I think he stepped away. Oh, did yeah. he step away? No. Ah. Uh, for a question to ask, uh, like out of character wise. Uh, oh, no, he's back. Okay. Yep, welcome back, Sue. I apologize. My family decides that uh, right when I tell them that I'm going to be doing this, that this is the perfect time for them to start busting into my room and yelling at me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, the uh, the ship has been described. Uh, it's got disruptor banks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, we are asking a free question thanks to our science officer here, and she is fishing around for an additional question. Do you have any... Um... Potential questions, or I guess potential well, questions. Asked. Well, we know that the ship has disruptors on it. We know that. We know that. Um, can have we determined from what faction is this styled ship? Because different groups have different ways of have different styles on their ships. Mm -hmm. So, are we able to ascertain from? If there, if it is from a group that we know, 
All right. If uh, you would like that to be your question. Yes, I, okay. I think that's important. Uh, I'm going to give this, uh, give you a little bit of detail on this. You run the schematics and the overall layout of the ship against your computer database. And the computer database returns that this is an entirely alien vessel. Uh, in fact, uh, something about the makeup of the hull uh, would indicate that it is not a traditional uh, trilithium or uh, what is that other uh, common ship. Basically, the metallurgy of the ship is not something that would be common to the uh, alpha or beta quadrants. So this is something either from the gamma or delta quadrants. Roger. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. So, hey, Kragath, I think we should probably go forward with this information to the captain and see what he's. I'm going to immediately try to open up comms to the captain's room. Well, captain, or at least you, get... you get a beep. Captain here. Captain, this is Master at Arms Kragath. It seems that we have an alien, unseen vessel trailing us. Very well. He's going to end communications and then pop on shipwide. All hands prepare for battle. Stand by. And he's... Uh, I forgot what the rest of it is now. <laughs> uh, all senior bridge report to the bridge. All senior staff report to the bridge. I'm brain dead tonight. It's <laughs> all right. So we're going to cut to the bridge with uh, all of you arriving in turn very quickly. Take your stations and, uh, yeah, go from there. Did we call for battle ready? Yeah. Deploy the seat belts. <laughs> <laughs> Gregor, Why when... is there a belt on the seat? <laughs> If we uh, have to do some interesting maneuvers, just strap it around you. It'll it'll harness up in the center. Come on, it's easy. Even you can do it. I, I'm just looking confused at it. And she'll kind of make a mocking gesture, grabbing the two sides, like, click, click. Click, click. <laughs> Start hitting them together a little bit before getting annoyed and just ripping them off the seat. <sighs> There's four hours of work. Thanks. Um, of course, is going to go ahead and like punch in her seatbelt. And also, is there a way to share the information on a screen or something? That way, everybody knows what the vessel and yeah. is. All you have to do is just push a few buttons and you would get uh, the same information that I showed you earlier. Uh, now on the main view screen. So here is the ship. <laughs> Lieutenant, how long have they been tailing us? I can't say. I was doing a, a scan earlier and realized that this vessel was behind us. Number one? Yes, Captain. You're Oh, I forgot she was Russian. <laughs> yes, she is very Russian. What is it you need? Your old hands report ready for battle? Yes, we are at full combat readiness. Good. Open up a hailing frequency to this vessel. Channel open, sir. Unidentified vessel. This is Captain Dominus of the Dark Royale. Please identify yourself and state your intentions. Okay, so there's a pause uh, during which time the cloaked ship actually comes out of cloak. And uh, moments later, a new individual uh, appears on the view screen. Uh, now, in particular, this individual is uh, interesting in design. And by that, I mean the fact that while they are humanoid in nature, uh, they appear to be uh, what are essentially armored individuals. So they're wearing some form of a a protective suit. Um, what you're noticing is that they have maybe four digits instead of the traditional five 
Uh, so their hands, feet, etc. only have the four. Um, otherwise, they are a bulky sort of human-ish, you know, head, two arms, two legs, etc., etc. Um, but really their defining fa- features are obscured by whatever protective suit they're wearing. And the suit I am stylizing after a more of an Iron Man style, uh, where the uh, suit itself sort of forms across their skin and otherwise is uh, impenetrable to sensors and obviously your gaze. Um, but the individual pops up on the screen, sort of looks at you with uh, glowing eyes of the suit and says, I am just a car skid of the Onzen Empire. You are harboring a fugitive aboard your vessel. You will turn them over immediately. A pleasure to meet you, Onzen Emissary. Can you please give me information on this fugitive? This is not your concern. All we know is that he is aboard your vessel and thus is within our jurisdiction. Unfortunately, you are asking a ship that you've never encountered before to allow you aboard our vessel. We will assist you in acquiring this individual if you give us the specifications and the life signature we should be looking for. We will carry out our search ourselves, and if we require aid, we will then allow a small team to board our vessel. Let's have you roll a presence command. Uh, difficulty of four after I spend some threat. <laughs> uh, persuasion, diplomacy. All would apply. Excellent. We still have two momentum as well. You do indeed. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. I have talents. Uh, diffused attention. Can I use that at all as well? You can definitely apply that. So the difficulty would come down to a three. Excellent. So I will buy one extra momentum, uh, one extra dice. And oh, yeah. man, let's go. Surveys. Ooh, look at that. Four successes. Very nice. You get that momentum right back. So, uh, just a car skid. Uh, it's hard to really tell if he's thinking or grimacing or anything of that nature. So after a pause, he finally replies and says, Very well, we are transmitting the life signature you are to be searching for. We will give you a total of ten of your minutes to ascertain where this individual is on your ship. After which point, we will be sending a delegation over. Understandable and agreeable. We will drop out of warp momentarily. And he'll just look to Helm and do the hand gesture to kill comms and then to drop out of warp. All right. And you do so. Lieutenant Chorus, start scanning. Yes, sir. And I'm going to slowly turn and look to Kraga. I think like, Master at Arms. Captain, you're responsible for this vessel. How did a stowaway get aboard our ship? Uh, I def I start thinking. There is only two possibilities, Captain. A, a stowaway managed to hide within this within some recess of the ship that I am not aware of, or B, he was allowed on willingly by us. Or, a third option, you're negligent in your duty. If this life form is found, I want you to ascertain it and then acquire it. When it is found, I will bring it before you in chains. Try not to use chain. We don't know the full story yet, but for right now we're going to cooperate. And as he's saying that, he's going to send uh, a pad of the schematic of the ship to Kargath so he knows every inch of the ship. <laughs> I am seeing no new inches of this ship. <sighs> and yeah, just yeah, going to look at our lovely bullion and see what she comes up with. Yeah, so uh, this is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be a... Re- well, you know what? I'll give you reason science. Uh, the ship is going to assist with a sensor security, though. Uh, the difficulty here will be a three. And uh, you would have a focus still. 
Very nice. So that is a total of four successes, which means you get one more momentum. And uh, yeah, what you find is that there is indeed the life sign that you're looking for. And the life sign is currently within the main shuttle bay. Immediately rising from my seat and heading out to deal with it. Should we, like, walk down the escape pods? This is our Cornet vessel. We do not have escape pods. And if we are to die in battle, we die on the ship. That makes me feel so comfortable. This is a joke. Ha! 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 As I'm exiting, <laughs> I just look at the captain. It is not a joke. We do not have escape pods. We just never lose. Nice. <laughs> all right, so my question to all of you, is it just going to be Kragath that's going, or are other members of you going to go, you know, see what's up in the shuttle bay? Well, if in case the person moves, I mean, would I be able to have a data pad or something? to help track you certainly could all right yeah i guess i'll go ahead and join him okay anyone else Dumbs is going to stand up and look to number one He's like you have the bridge understood sir and for the rest of you you're going to get answers later and as soon as he's finished saying that he's going to shift into the figure that was on the view screen oh interesting okay Kaya would be interested if she, if Chorus has uh, related the information, I would like to discern why our internal sensors didn't pick it up earlier. Mm, okay. Technical uh, wise. T technical wise. Why don't you roll me a reason in engineering? And this will be at a difficulty of three. The ship will not be assisting you on this. Okay. So I'm diagnosing basically. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, power systems, perhaps? Mm. I will give you power systems for reasons that will become apparent if you succeed. Ooh, nice. Uh, and I'd like to spend one of our momentum, if that's okay with everyone. Sure. Okay. Come on! Hmm, well, with uh, two successes, uh, I would say that uh, you are able to maybe determine that you know, maybe something with the way your power distribution on the ship uh, has obscured the life signal until now is what you're generally getting, but you're not getting specifics, if that makes any sense. Okay. So Kaya is probably just furiously, like, as Dominus is walking away, like, furiously, like, why didn't it detect? Like, like typing kind of harder and harder, trying to figure out why it, why it didn't show up as if, you know, she failed. Right. Okay. And with that, we are going to cut to the main shuttle bay. Now, the main shuttle bay on the Dark Royal is actually uh, rather spacious because in the shuttle bay is a specialized uh, landing craft that the Dark Royal has. Uh, but that's not really important. What is important is that when you step in, uh, you are immediately noticing that there is a figure very tall and imposing figure in what appears to be uh, battle armor, meaning that uh, they are fully encased in metal. Uh, they have what appear to be some form of disruptor on both of their wrists. Uh, they have otherwise a cornet-like stature, meaning that they're very tall, very muscular. Uh, they appear to have horn or at least other ornaments on their head. And uh, they are sort of looking straight at Dominus because Dominus has shifted form into an Onzan. Now, they haven't started shooting at you, but all three of you would see this immediately. Let's go look to both of them. I guess I'm going to talk first. Uh, I immediately jump down. Okay. Not not even bother with the stair with the uh, stairs. I immediately just drop down to ground floor. Okay. I stay where I am, staring at Dominus, and then right back at the other character, trying to figure out what the heck is happening. Okay. 
from the quick glance, does the creature look hurt? Does it look like it's been injured? No, it uh, it looks perfectly fine. Uh, it doesn't seem to be sporting any wounds. Uh, however, you do notice that the right pauldron, the metal pa- metal of the pauldron, it is slightly charred as if it was hit by an energy blast. All right. Um, I have something called Cold Reading. Mm-hmm. Trying to find what book that's in. My guess is it's in Command. So let's see if we can um, look it up real fast. Quick look here. Let's see. Yep, here it is. Uh, succeeding at a task during social conflict generates one bonus momentum, which must be used on the obtain information spend. Oh, okay, I thought I thought it was like to get um, a, like a a quick thing done on them. No, well, you do get a benefit during extended tasks, uh, which gives you right. the scrutinize benefit. That's why I grabbed it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it doesn't uh, uh, in this instance it would not apply, unfortunately. I'm just going to, like, look at it as I'm walking down the stairs, not breaking any eye contact with it. But I'm not going to... I don't have any weapons in my hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just going to stand at the very bottom. Uh, if I can... Can I grab... I can't grab that token, by the way. Okay. I don't know why. Let me... Uh... Oh, I know why you can't grab it. Because I didn't set it. There you go. You should be able to grab it now. So I'll move it down there and just raise my hands. And as best as I can to mimic the same voice, uh, like the style of the voice through the view screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, identify yourself. Why are you on this vessel? And uh, the answer uh, is twofold. The first is that the individual uh, sort of shrieks and says, you'll never take me alive. And then it will fire haphazardly in your general direction, Dominus. So let's hey. take a roll here. Good news is, is the uh, the disruptor, as it shoots a uh, voluminous uh, green bolt at you, uh, misses you completely. It just whizzes overhead and hits the wall ineffectually. Uh, may I immediately take uh, action to charge him and tackle him? You certainly may. Uh, we'll do this as an opposed melee check. So this is going to be a daring and security for you, and they will be rolling the same. Uh, you just need to get two successes here, and the, uh, tackle is yours. Two successes is what you get. So, yes, you are able to tackle, uh, this individual to the ground. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna walk... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Eight-foot cornet just immediately grabs him, drags him to the ground, and roars, Name and designation. Now. And, uh, of course, the individual does put up somewhat of a struggle, uh, but it's nothing you can't handle. And their answer is, you're working with them. I, I'm i not going back with them. You can't make me. They are not here. Tell me now. Chorus is, or I'm going to go ahead, like, run down the stairs. Mm-hmm. Not frantic, but in saying, don't be so rough with him we thinking that Kragath is being too rough and probably gonna break this guy mm-hmm. um and she's like we need him alive and I won't kill him let's be nice <laughs> you'll just wish he died you'll just wish he died and captain are you staying where you are or are you moving in as well uh does the entity still have a view of me uh no you are what is essentially now behind your landing craft so okay. you can hear what's going on, but you cannot see what's going on. I'll walk around, and as uh, I get into view of him, uh, I'm going to shift back into Dominus. Okay, give me one second. Shift back into Dominus. So as you shift back, uh, the creature kind of looks at you with its metal-encased head and uh, lets out what would be a, a gasp of some sort, at least a, a sharp intake of air, and says, you... You are not with the Anzan. Hollow projectors are very interesting weapons. Yes. We're not with them, but they have asked us to find the stowaway. They're trailing our ship, and they have significant weapons. 
I do not want to have a diplomatic issue, so I must know why you're on our ship and why they want you. First things first, get this buffoon off me. I pull his arm a little bit harder. Okay. He, put, uh, putting it in a bad position. He uh, seems to stay stoic. He doesn't let out any noise or any sign that he's in discomfort. Exoskeleton or robotic mech suit. Which is it? Dominus will tilt his head back out of a sign of respect. And I was like, help him up. I roughly pull him to his feet. So, uh, you know, he, uh, quote unquote, dusts himself off with uh, one of his hands and looks to you, Damas, and says, my name is Briar. I am a member of the, well, I should say former member of the Onzan Science Academy. Science Academy, I can speak today. So you're a student. Uh, more a profound researcher. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Profound Researcher, the only other egghead here is going to be the one standing in blue, and after she is blue. <laughs> what are you doing on my ship? Well, trying to escape from the odds end, apparently. And failing. Why are you on my ship? What makes you think you can escape them? Why are you trying to escape well, it's because they want my micro wormhole technology. Micro wormhole technology. Do what? you know their weapons? Do you know their potential? So, actually, uh, he kind of gives that one moment and he turns to Koros and says, Yes, my micro wormhole technology. Surely you have something similar. <laughs> I'm going to look to crack it. And questioningly, and, and hoping he gets my expression. Blank face does not understand. <laughs> 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 do we have micro wormhole technology? Out of character, no. You you do not have such a thing. Okay. I no, we don't. <laughs> this is news. We have slip space technology. Well, to put it in terms that would be easy to understand, he looks specifically at Kragath for some reason. The technology I have developed enables one to step between two points anywhere within the galaxy, merely at the flick of a switch. My eyes narrow. Something tells me that this is not stable. No, and in fact, uh, this suit I am wearing is the only quote-unquote stable prototype. So you warped into our ship? Quite by accident, but yes. I give a look at uh, Dominus, then back at uh, Briar. Exoskeleton or mech? Neither. For a run of time, they have given us a few of our minutes to find you and hand you over before they send a delegation. So, is your shoot suit damaged? Other than the rough housing that your friend here gave me, no, I am perfectly fine. However, uh, if you turn me over, then the Onzan will more or less use my technology to develop a rather potent weapon uh, which I don't think I need to tell you if I can teleport anywhere in the universe guess what the weapon can do well then I only see a few options for you terminate yourself is one of them if this knowledge is so dangerous send yourself somewhere that will never be able to get you he doesn't really reply to that option. Is your Another technology... option, if I may interject, would be simply to disappear. I mean, that's what I thought I was doing when I came aboard your ship, but apparently I did a very poor job of it. Do you know if they have any tracking device attached to your suit? 
I haven't had time to sit down and go over it with a fine tooth comb, no. I believe you should check it. Captain, of time. do you think you could buy us a few more minutes? I can buy a few different ideas. One of them involves me leaving the ship. I would rather not the captain be stranded on an unknown vessel. We could state that our system has has now been has now sighted multiple of this life form on our ship. Carlos, yes, the Federation are fond of dampening signals. Are you able to do some type of dampening field around him, suppress any signals his suit may have, and if we can replicate another method of his, what you call it, micro wormhole jumping? If we can replicate that energy signature to show that he left the ship, they may leave us alone. But we need to be quick. Potentially, I can give it a shot. All right. So what I'm going to say here is that you don't really have time for an extended task, but uh, I'm going to allow uh, Cross, and uh, if you call up to Kaya, uh, you two can work on this together. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty five, uh, daring and science, or a daring and engineering. The ship will assist you with a sensors and security. Is it Chorus or Kaya, rolling, or is it better? Uh, it's whichever one between the two of you that would prefer to roll, but you are both assisting one another. Okay. Let's see. It was daring engineering uh, or daring science? Yeah, either one. Okay. I think your daring might be higher than mine. Daring of nine? Yeah, I have a daring of seven. Okay. Um, I could lead. All right. Okay. Uh, it, is, it is a so, difficulty five, so you may wish to spend momentum and determination here. Definitely determination. Um and uh, the value is probably just from being upset that something happened that she wasn't aware of, like the ship failed. Mm -hmm. She's taking it personal. So the second there's like, oh, we can do something about this, like she's going to jump to it and use I must not fail as her value. Okay. Would that, would that work? That would definitely apply. Okay. Daring engineering. Um, and then we have uh, two momentum. Is there a way to assist? Yeah, so you're going to be rolling your own daring science. You're just rolling 1d20. Got it. And I would say sensor operations would apply as a focus here. Okay. Okay, and then what do you guys think? Should I use one momentum with the, my determination? We well, have should to spend I go two for... because determination counts as a, as a die. Oh, okay. So I can only get one extra or, or then buy the threat. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Should I buy threat for even more or just go with the one? I don't. Hmm. Buying threat is always a risk because sure. that can be immediately used against us. Okay. So m momentum then. I'll burn our two momentum for a third dice with momentum spend. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I can do. Alrighty. Okay. Here we go. And then um, focus on... Power systems would apply here. Nice. Okay. All right. So let's break this down. Uh, you have two free successes from your determination. You um, have rolled two successes. And then Karas has assisted you with a success of her own. So congrats uh, between the two of you working together. You are able to put a dampening field around the entire shuttle bay. And not a moment okay. too soon, because as soon as the two of you finish your work, uh, a certain first officer comes over the comms and says, uh, Captain, the uh, the alien visitors wish to speak with you. Should I uh, tell them you are coming, or should I pipe it down there? Tell them I'll be at the bridge in a moment. They'll buy us a little bit more time. Uh, very good. And I'll head up to the bridge. Uh, as I look to the two of my crew, I was like... Make sure if they do inspect here that he's not visible. Put him somewhere. 
and I point to the tank. But what if they check the tank? Well, hopefully they don't. No. So, well, head up to the bridge. Okay. So as he's stepping away, uh, Briar is going to kind of look at Karas and says, that was very quick thinking of you. I uh, probably should have thought to do something similar. Um, where, where, where are we hiding me exactly? He said the tank. I'm assuming that's the shuttle. That's the shuttle, yeah. Is there actually a way we can hide him even further from eyesight, like a cloaking device? Um, I would say you could certainly take him to the hollow deck and hide him in there. Yeah. Would it be possible for him to hide to hide him inside, say, munitions and such, make him look like just another piece of technology? Uh, I would say it is possible. How far away are those two areas? Uh, far enough away that it would be outside the dampening field that you have made. We kind of set it up on the on the bay, I think, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't. It's, it's not a ship wide. It's for just here. Yeah, it's just Ooh. on the shuttle bay. Ooh, big brain thoughts. I, I open up the uh, shuttle. Mm -hmm. We will hide you in here. <laughs> <laughs> My baby! No! So, uh, Briar um, just sort of looks at you strangely and says, uh, Alright. Can I not? I walk him in. Mm -hmm. And I open up one of those one of those hatches inside a ship that you just store things in that are always empty for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just gesture for him to get in. Uh I, I don't think I'll fit in there. Plus, I, I need to, if I'm going to be checking for homing signals, I, I need room to work. We will check once they are gone. Very well. And yeah, he uh, takes some doing, but he squeezes into that compartment, <laughs> no problem. And I close the compartment and then make sure to cover in a way that looks like it's not even a compartment. Okay. Oh, it'll never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> So defeated. So, uh, is, <laughs> is there a way for me to, I guess, um, swap codes or something with us, uh, with Briar, so I can know that he's okay? Yeah, that he would give you a uh, a frequency you could talk with him over. Perfect. Be careful with that because they may or may not be scanning for frequencies. Mm -hmm. uh, good point. But it still could uh. be handy to have. Yeah, as that all goes on, uh, we're going to cut back to the bridge where, uh, yeah, Dominus, you are stepping right onto the bridge as uh, Hiev is in mid-conversation with uh, Justicar. Uh, what did I name him? Skid. Justicar Skid. And uh, Skid says, uh, we will not tolerate any further delays. You will allow us to come aboard your vessel for an inspection. And is it? it's like mid-sentence that Hiev kind of turns as the door opens. Is ah, oh, yes, Captain. So I was just telling the just the car. Uh, here, here he is. Just a car. Just a car. Yeah. I was sad to report that whatever it was on the ship had suddenly disappeared. He fired at us, took cover, and then was gone. You mean the fugitive has escaped? Yes. We did not know he was armed. That was something that was neglected in your transmission. We have been studying your vessel for a long while. It was our understanding that you were capable combatants. And then he sort of lets that hang and says something that you don't quite catch to someone off screen. And uh, yeah, they apparently, well, he have reports us that they are performing a very intensive scan. Um, I do not think the uh, shuttle be dampening field. Uh, she says this obviously not over that the just car can hear. Uh, I do not believe that uh, the shuttle base uh, will be sufficient cover. And she sort of looks at Kaya, almost as if wondering something. Could you disrupt this scanning in some way? That's you, bro guy. 
I think he might have stepped away. Ah, uh, no, I was muted and it didn't undo. Rip. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying not to giggle too much, so I'm muting myself. Okay. <clears throat> um, disrupt. Um, let's see. How would we go about doing that? Let's see. Uh, is it like an internal or? It's an external high frequency scan that is starting uh, near the aft of the vessel and sweeping forward. Ah, so they haven't completed it yet. Okay, so we can immediately, uh, I'd like to like f focus ours to kind of just make noise, mm -hmm. just as much noise, sensor noise as possible. And um, is it signal jamming? Would that be a task? Yeah, I think that's exactly what this would be. This would be a signal jamming task. So this okay. would be a control engineering and the ship will assist you with a communications and security and you get to pick the difficulty here. It's either a one, two, or a three. And the ship's assisting? The ship is assisting with communication security. Can mm. I give my determination to someone? Uh, you certainly may. As the captain, you have that prerogative. I'm going to give it to uh, Kaya. To Kaya? Kaya. Okay. Uh, ooh, so I, that means I can burn it, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Oh, yep. so let's go di for difficulty three then. Okay. Um... I'm burning the determination, which gives us two automatic successes. Mm -hmm. Don't have any momentum, so I'm just going to roll two d20 then. Okay. That, does that sound correct? That sounds right. Sounds fine. Okay, and then uh, power systems again. I. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, it's a bit too much. Okay, no focus. <laughs> All right. No, well, that's four successes. So let's see what the ship rolls. See if you get any more momentum. Uh, Karos, do you want to roll for the ship? Uh, sure. Thank you. What was it again? Comms and security. And that's under departments, right? Uh, security should be the departments. Communications should be the uh, system. Got it. So I roll systems yeah. first, and well, then either way, it'll it'll walk you through it. Uh, you're rolling one die, and the ship always has a focus. So it's comms, ship department is ship security. Mm -hmm. Okay, so unfortunately the ship doesn't assist you, so you only get the no. one momentum. But uh, yeah, Kaya, you are quick enough on your feet that uh, as the beam sweeps over the shuttle bay, uh, to the best of your knowledge, you have obscured uh, the residents there. And sure enough, the Justicar kind of turns his head back from off screen and says, very well, we are able to confirm that the fugitive is no longer on your vessel. You may proceed about your day. And the the view screen cuts. And you all would see the uh, ship on the view screen, sort of bank, cloak, and, well, let me rephrase that. Bank, go to warp, and then cloak, so it has disappeared from your sensors. Lieutenant Karras to the bridge immediately. Yes, sir. Have take us to that system we passed by with the neutronium star. Ah, I was thinking something similar, Captain. The radiation's gonna possibly be difficult for them to stay cloaked. Aye, sir. Laying in course. And when we get in, make it look like we're there for a survey. Launch some probes, make it look like we're conducting scientific research. Sir, is this joke? You know that we have no such probes aboard. I know, I mean laying down some of our torpedoes, have them activate remotely, and then guide it to whatever we set the target as. Ah, very, very nice, Captain. I probably have some dummies that haven't been loaded into the rounds yet, so we could probably just chuck those casings with ominous beepings. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is, is that you all have photonic torpedoes, which are like NX level torpedoes. So, yeah, you could make those probes or act like probes, no problem. I, I would like to make one of them play the Jaws theme. All right, so Karas, uh, you run up onto the bridge, uh, probably just about uh, midway between where you were and the Neutron Star. So you haven't quite gotten there yet. 
Yes, Captain? How can I help? We're going to be hunkering down near a neutron star. We're hoping that the radiation and the difficulty of being so close to a star will keep our guests from staying cloaked. But I want you to work on the sensors for them to be able to pick them up again. So calibrate them for that distortion they're admitting. Yes, sir. Captain Tarkarath. Oh, did we lose soup? Oh, my apologies. My mic decided to die for a moment. Rip. Well, entire headset. I missed the last sentence, I believe. <laughs> Captain's hailing uh, Kragath. I pick up. Captain. Our guest, make sure he stays within the tank slash shuttle. He is currently him... still within his compartment. Get him out of his compartment. And I believe before I left, he was mentioned of looking for a device on his suit. Make sure he starts that right away. So uh, what I do is I get off the compartment. Mm -hmm. I open it up and I yank him out. Okay. He's like, I can get out on my own. Don't, 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 don't pull me there. You'll, you'll break it. Rip. <laughs> All the stress marks now. No. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he protests, but otherwise gets out of the compartment and he says, all right, am I doing this here? Am I doing it out in the bay? Where where am I doing this? In here. OK, so he, he starts dismantling parts of his suit and going over it. Um, but yeah, he it's not like he pulls out like a disruptor or anything like he is actively working on his suit. Does he actually get out of his suit? Uh, not entirely. No, he seems to be deliberately taking off parts of it. And then once he's inspected that part, he replaces the part and pulls off another. Um, I, I, I Kaya heard the mention of a suit. Uh, how do I want to phrase this? Uh, so Kaya's going to look to Dominus for a moment. Captain, did I hear the mention of technology being repaired? I take it you want to investigate? Very much, sir. Granted, but get scans of our alien visitor, too. I want to know what he is. Will do. And she kind of jumps up at attention. And we'll hurry her way. All right. So it is at this point that we are going to take a 10-minute break. So be back at 10.15 uh, local.
And welcome back from our break, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead just a tiny bit uh, to you all so that I don't have to repeat myself uh, and also so you all don't play the telephone game. Uh, it's basically been about two or three hours since uh, Briar's arrival and your, shall we say, subterfuge to conceal Briar. And you all have decided to meet in the war room to discuss matters at hand. So, so, oh, go ahead. Have you found anything within your armor? Briar nods, and he puts on the table in front of all of you a oblong uh, cylinder, and says, "That's uh, that's how they were tracking me. Uh, technically, uh, if uh, well, let me put it this way: if you destroy it here, it will send out a sort of a feedback loop." And they'll know that it has been destroyed, and they'll know exactly where I am. Could we send it into the Neutron Star? I suppose that is an option, yes, but they would eventually be drawn to the Neutron Star. Is is there a possibility, um, out of game, uh, mm -hmm. did Kaya have any time to work with him prior to this briefing, or did this kind of just happen... I would say that it is probably because of your assistance that led to discovery of this device, but that you did not gain any special insight into the inner workings of his suit. Okay. Because I was wondering, so uh, however you want to do this, I was wondering if she had known, like, they figured this out, perhaps she would have already figured out a, a local dampening field, you know, just like a little case of some kind to stick oh, it I in. Oh, I see. Uh, why don't you roll me a reason engineering at a difficulty of two? Reason, engineering, 
2d20 uh power system emergency repairs <laughs> robotics i'll give you robotics <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grasp at straws here okay uh, so all right so unfortunately no you weren't able to gain any special insight in that matter okay well it seems that a dampening field is able to block the signal so what we could do is leave it in the cargo bay for the time being. We get somewhere, we get rid of it once we're far enough away from this system, and then let them have a fun goose chase. The other idea is we load it into our torpedo and fire it in a random direction and let them chase that for a while, because momentum will just continue in space. But if they see it's our torpedo... They'll know it was us who pulled a fast one. That's true. Tell me, good doctor, your suit is able to go from point A to point B wherever in the galaxy. Can you just not simply make a localized field to send this into the middle of the galactic core? I could, yes, but it would be the last of my energy reserves. I would be completely defenseless if I did so. Well, you have... The ability to either do it yourself and send it away, or be stuck on a ship with the thing that they can track you with. Does, no, he... What kind of energy are you talking about? Uh, well, uh, specifically, I need energy in the Theta Band, which I haven't had time to look at your engines, but your engines might be capable of it. Uh, did out of character did we happen to mine any of the dilithium crystals uh no not of yet in fact nobody besides you at this table knows that that moon Ooh. has dilithium oh no okay um so do dilith can you happen can you use the dilithium crystals if i were given access to raw dilithium yes i think i could do it all right um chorus is going to turn to the captain now uh, there was a moon that that we have passed that happens to have dilithium crystals that we can use, or that we can get so he can use it. Very well. I propose a trade of sorts. You send this away now, we go to this moon, get you some dilithium so you can charge up your armor. This is uh, acceptable so far. My only question is, are you really just going to let me leave once I'm charged? What is your intention with your armor? Take it somewhere that nobody would be able to find me, unless there's another tracking device I don't know about. And are you the only one that can make this technology? I specifically erased all traces of my research, and the only living copy is here in my suit, yes. He's just going to look to the Federation officer for a second. Like, Normally, on a Cornette ship, you wouldn't be talking. That suit would be stripped for parts, and mm -hmm. any knowledge you would have had would have been beaten out of you. And then made part of the Imperium. But that's not how I run my ship. And how do you run your ship, uh, Captain Dominus? And he says this not in a way, like, accusatory. He's just very questioning. Like, apprehensive, even. You have set a course for the moon. Nice, sir. We'll be done. And he's going to reach down to the little tracker, and he's going to hand it to Briar. Send it away now. Right. So he takes it, uh, kind of holds it aloft, and then uh, the palm of his hand glows, and a miniature wormhole opens up, and there's like almost a rush of air as uh, the device and the surrounding sort of space is sucked into the wormhole, and then the wormhole sort of evaporates, uh, almost like particles on the wind. And almost immediately, uh, Briar's suit, the lights lighting on it, dies and cuts out. And uh, there's a noticeable oomph 
as Briar takes the full weight of his suit and says, Right, forgot how heavy this damn thing was. Okay, do you want to help him out of it? Let's see if we can figure out some conversion, maybe get you a temporary power cell. She'll walk over and, you know, pull out one of the, the typical engineering tricorders and just kind of start scanning, looking for uh, compatibility. Maybe I can get him something I, for temporary. I look at Briar and state, or you could simply remove the suit for the meantime. That's an excellent idea. That would totally help if I can scan it from the inside. That would make my scanning so much faster. Uh, no offense, uh... I'm uh, very hesitant to, to uh, give you all full access to the suit. Not full access. I just need it. It would be faster. I won't be interrupted by your bio signs. I will take it under consideration, but I'm still able to move under my own power for the time being. Okay, yeah. If he yes, does Captain. require assistance, and he, if he does need to leave his suit... Any scans you take will then be showed to him, and you, Briar, will then delete what is necessary. Kaya is, looks very dejected. This is an acceptable compromise, Captain. I thank you for your wisdom. As per your Captain. orders, Captain. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, may I speak with you for a moment? In private, or is this here? Fine. Um, maybe corner of the room. We don't have to leave, necessarily. The meeting's dismissed, everyone. Except for you, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I was wondering if it were possible if we could contact the Federation about this briar. And inform them of his technology. Submit an incident report stating what would have happened if he had left the ship. If the transmission is intercepted and analyzed, they will know that this individual got away. This will give Starfleet a heads up. And once we get clear, we can then send him a full transmission. Should we at least get, an, I guess, a direction of where he's going? At the moment, we don't know where he's planning on going. He has the whole galaxy he can go to. Do me a favor, though. Check yes, if there's any other technology that's been mentioned that's like this. Yes, sir. That... Those were my concerns. And I do hope that you mention in your report that this ship is not the typical. It is the test bed for the new practices of the Cornets. What we do here will affect everything else. I will be sure to mention that. And I am glad that you did not torture this individual. There's any other captain that would have been done. Typically, it is policy. But that's why I'm here. I appreciate it. You're just. Thank you. Alrighty. So, uh, does anyone have any specific scenes they want to get out of the way? Kaya in engineering, or maybe Kragith looming over Briar at some point? Um, right. I think I'll be looming over uh, quite a few people. Okay. Which includes I... uh, looming a little bit over our captain. Because he straight up insulted my carrot. Because he straight up insulted me. Alright, in that case, what we're going to do, because I find it funny, uh, Karas, as you leave the meeting room, you brush shoulders with perhaps a very upset or otherwise disturbed Kragath. She is... Looking it out of there. <laughs> yes, Kragath. Captain, I would like for you to take back the words you stated on this, on the bridge. Our ship is incapable of stopping wormhole travel. 
through it. He's, he's leaning at the table looking over the report, and he just slowly leans back up. And he's like, excuse me? You stated that it was my negligence that led to a stowaway arriving on our ship. Yes. How was my negligence? How was my negligence capable of causing a person to appear on our ship through wormhole space? Quick question out of character: Does mm -hmm. the ship is it equipped with a computer system like you know other starships? Like I say, computer, it responds. Sort of, yes. It's not as advanced, but it does respond. Computer, current life signs aboard the vessel. The number of life signs on the vessel is, and it gives a reading, plus one. Is this scan continuous across the board? It is, yes. That's why you failed. You're negligent. The scans have changed. You didn't notice. You did not set up any parameters to examine any changes in our population of the ship. The crew complement had shifted plus one. You were not notified. Slight narrowing of eyes. I begin slowly walking away before I stop and state, When did he arrive on our ship? Oh, is this computer? Still a computer? Yes. Uh, it gives a approximation that correlates to uh, when the bio signs that you were supposed to be looking for were transmitted from the own zone. So before that point, before your first contact, you had no idea that they were on the ship. I give Dominus the small look because that means not even the computer knew about it until we were transferred life sign signals and I leave. Uh, there is a scene I want to do probably more close to the end. Though. I just want to give you a heads up. Okay. I mean, but that's sort of me fishing around because honestly, uh, you guys responded very well. Um, I honestly don't see any roadblocks between getting Briar, uh, his suit recharged and all that. Um, so it's mostly just me fishing for what scenes you guys want to accomplish before I sort of do the, uh, Star Trek send off for the episode. Okay. Now I'm going to lean over on Briar. Um, let's see. Dominus will make a visit to engineering. A visit to engineering. Very well. And that's where we were going to find uh, Kaya, Briar. <laughs> Alec is still here. None of those people are here. Get off my ship! <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do the warp core with him. Just throw him in the warp core. I'm sure it'll be fine. What do you think we're running on? <laughs> the quarter is humans all along. All right, there you no, go. No. You uh, you walk into main engineering uh, with Kai and Briar at the moment, and if anybody else wants to be there, just shout, and I'll throw you in. So, uh, probably when you're entering, like I probably got like whatever hatch, back door, like back panel off, and I'm like trying to play with. It. I probably got some power pack or something. I'm like trying to fiddle with him. Mm -hmm. How's the progress so far? Well, it's a little bit interesting technology. Like, look at the wiring here. This makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Why would it route through the tertiary uh, power and then come looping back around through the, the the joints? I don't... This makes no sense. This design looks like an amateur. No offense, Doc. Well, in order to boost the macroscopic gravimetric imaging actu actuator, you had to wire it in such a way. Um, I guess, but I think you could have wired it through the gravimetric uh, actuator first and then to the power pack. That doesn't, yeah, no. But it works. I'm just amazed that you made this technology with this workmanship. We're making good strides, though, Captain. Briar, I have a few requests for you. I believe I owe you a few, so yes, what, what is it I can do for you? Well, everyone here is itching to know how you look underneath that suit. Is there anything you can tell us me about your species? What type of mindset is their military? Well, I can tell you that the Onzan uh, fancy themselves as a... I hesitate to use the word policing force for the galaxy... 
they uh very regimental they uh they like imposing their will upon others that their law is the highest law if that makes any sense Mm, sounds like my people in a way. <laughs> Can you give me any information of where they originate from? What part of the galaxy? How far the Empire expands? I can certainly give you that information. Uh, with your permission, any motions at Kaya at one of the uh, nearby panels? Oh. Mm. Yeah, all right. He goes over it and attaches a uh, cable to it, and a uh, cornucopia of information travels from his suit into the computer banks. And he says, there you go. All the the, uh, the data on the Ozen Empire. Excellent. Thank you. I do hope that one day negotiations with your people can be established. Hopefully this deception doesn't sour any future encounter. Well, uh, I will say this much, that uh, when the Justicar finds out he has been tricked, he will probably bring up his concerns with you very shortly. Uh, however, what I would say to you, Captain Dominus, is that my sentiments are not my own. Uh, there is a growing force within the uh, Empire that perhaps it is not our place to act as a galactic peacekeeping force. Well, we'll see what happens. Tell me, have you ever heard of a neutronium battering ram? You did what with neutronium? <laughs> That's the reaction I was hoping. Thank you. I'll let you two get back to it. And as Dominus steps out, Briar looks very questioningly at, at Kai and says, you did what with Neutronium? Oh, you've got to see this. And her eyes light up. Okay, so here's what we got. And she's going to start explaining. <laughs> like, she's excited about this, like, completely forgetting about what they were doing. Just explaining exactly how they rigged the ship with the structure to take the battering ram. Nice. All right. Any other scenes people would like to get out of the way? Uh, I would like Chorus to pop by. Okay. In engineering or elsewhere? Uh, engineering, because that's where Briar's located. Roger that. Karas, you step on into engineering midway through the uh, techno babble surrounding the neutronium battering ram. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then sparks fly as I just haphazardly <laughs> connect the power just to check. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> um... She's going <laughs> to laugh at Kaya for a second and then turn over to Briar. And um, so your it was a uh, micro black hole device, is it, that you created? It is. Uh, actually, it's very, very ironic that you mentioned a black hole because it is something very similar to micro black holes. Uh, that uh, is enabling my wormhole technology. Yes. Oh yeah, wormhole. I mean, it, you were even at a character. You, it's almost the same thing. It's it's analogous. Got it. Um, how did you go about starting that tech? Well, I uh, if I may ask, I don't mind answering. Uh, we started by studying uh, black holes to begin with. Uh, we sent in probes, and honestly, uh, I I'd always had had the assumption that black holes were not just a overwhelming gravity sink that led to destruction. I I always believed that they were quite literally just a different form of wormholes. So uh, after studying a large amount of black holes for a large amount of time. Uh, we came to the conclusion that, yes, that uh, most micro black holes are actually just sort of little gateways into other parts of the universe. So it was just a matter of tapping that sort of mindset and generating micro black holes is simple for anyone with this level of technology. And he motions around it, engineering in general, not just at himself. <laughs> like... 
out of character. We haven't really, we haven't created that tech, correct? I think that's what no, you said. No, no, no. You have uh, quantum slipstream dive, which puts you into null space, but you do not have micro wormhole technology. And the difference, the main difference between the two would be? Uh, so QSD works in null space and more or less is um, just a way to go between two points in a different dimension, which is how I would flavor it. Um, the way QSD works is it's very computational uh, effective. Uh, you need to have really good sensors and a really good computer to do it. Uh, with micro wormhole technology, it would be like, uh, say, going between the Bajoran wormhole and the Gamma Quadrant. You just set up the two wormholes, and then you pass between it, and the transition is almost instantaneous. Whereas with QSD, there's actual travel time involved. Got it. Are there any notes that you could potentially share? You don't have to go, like, I'm interested in the tech, I will admit, but you don't have to share any trade secrets. I'd like you to roll something that I don't think I've ever had anyone roll ever. I'd like you to roll oh, me no. a present science, please. And the oh, difficulty man. here will be a three. You can do it. I believe in you. Burn your determination. <laughs> Burn your <a> determination. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> uh, is it possible? <laughs> yeah, if you've got a value that applies. Uh, I, I actually don't think I do. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, no, I don't think every problem has a solution qualifies. <laughs> I would say a people person would apply here. Oh, people person? Okay. And does that just add a dice? Uh, what it does is it gives you two free successes to start off with. So oh, you would only okay. need to roll one more. Uh, do it. Focus. Uh, I do not have a focus. Yeah, unfortunately, you do not have a focus here. Oh, diplomacy doesn't work? Oh, wait. No, I'll give you diplomacy. <laughs> And there you go, the one success you needed. So, uh, Briar, uh, motions for one of you to hand him a pad, and when one of you does, uh, he again... Oh, yeah, sort Kyle's of, all over that. Yeah, he, uh, he connects uh, his suit to the pad, and a flash of information passes over it, hands it to you, Karas, and says, this is not how to make the technology, but this is how it works in principle. You will, of course, need to do your own research and adapt it to your own technology. That is, I understand the stipulations of research and wanting to keep things safe and sacred. And I truly appreciate you sharing this information with us. Of course. And I am giving to, to this to you in the trust that should your government or your faction or whatever it is that you ally yourself to, the moment they start trying to use it for weaponry, you will destroy the technology. She smiles and nods, and I will see what I can do for that and hope that it does. it is used for peace versus weaponry. That's all I can ask for. she's like she's just okay yeah you've got a lot of homework to do now yes <laughs> all right yeah. so yeah, yeah uh any other scenes people would like to get out of the way oh uh, if it's okay i want to have greg pop into engineering okay <laughs> pow wow there's greg there's greg oh uh, did he crawl out of the the thing I had been yes. working on? Oh, man. Yeah, he crawls out yes. of a, out comes of out a over Jeffrey's here. cube. <laughs> Are you done already? Yes, Commander, I am done. Did you check both panels? Yes. You scrubbed them thoroughly? With my tongue. <laughs> please, please use a microscoper next time. Don't use your tongue. That is so gross when I have to work behind you. 
I hunger. <laughs> he goes. Have food. He goes to a little bin, pulls out a raw slab of meat, and starts to eat it. Oh, that smell is everywhere in that tunnel. That's why you're always in there, because I'm not working after you. <laughs> oh, it's funny, huh? Yes. Let's see how it is. Uh, and I think that's actually the perfect uh, way to note, uh, note to go out on. So long story short, uh, it's <laughs> trivial for you guys to both mine the dilithium and uh, power up Briar's suit. And uh, when Briar leaves, it's very unceremonious. Uh, the moment he's powered up, uh, he says thank you to everyone. And then one moment he's there. The next he's snapped his fingers and has vanished from the Dark Royal completely. And uh, you all have gained not only an ally, but uh, you've potentially gained an enemy as well. But I think that's where we're going to end the session today. Because uh, I don't really see a need to force Starship Combat on you all. So, uh, thank you for the game, everybody. Uh, we will hopefully be back in two weeks. Because remember, we are in every other week's schedule. Uh, I would just say watch uh, Twitter and Twitch for the, those of you listening in a podcast solution. Uh, but anyone on Twitch and or YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And see you later. Bye-bye, stream.